Hi, I'm Cider Spider, and I'm on a journey to get every available achievement in Final Fantasy XIV. This monumental grind takes countless hours of gameplay over the span of several years, and I'm taking it on one week at a time. So, let's get started. Alright everybody, the goal today is simple. Trying to max every single crafter job. As you can see, I've got a decent amount of headway already made. Most jobs are already halfway between 90 and 100. And so we're going to start today with our grand company turn-ins. Never neglect your grand company turn-ins, especially if, like me, it's the last thing you need to do for your grand company. Holy crap, I need to get these done. But more importantly, look at how much XP we get. What do you know? Four mil for a high-quality ruthenium knife. But if I turn in high-quality, it doubles to eight mil. Easy. And what do we got here? Half Gloves of Gathering. These have bonus XP on them. 9 million XP. But if I turn in high quality, it doubles. 18 million XP. All right, and that's obviously Leather Worker 97. Easy. See, we've got these tops. That's 4 million XP to Weaver. Sorry, 8 million XP to Weaver. I'll take a nice 9 mil XP for Alchemist. Anybody hey, know there's Alchemist 97? And uh, I did not acquire high quality omelets. Too lazy. Either way, 7 million XP. And so here we stand, already having made quite a bit of progress. Nothing to shake a stick at. Oh, I guess I should uh, turn in my gatherer ones as well while I'm here. These two are good. Look at this one 11 million XP for some buckets of sap. It's just too easy. You can do those once per day. It's pretty much a free level every two days. But since I've just done my dailies, they'll reset at 4 p.m. So in just three and a half hours, I'll be able to do all of that again. Hooray. All right. Another day, another set of grand company turn-ins. Let's see what we've got here. Could it be 10 million goldsmithing experience? It could. What about 10 million leatherworking experience? Yeah, sounds good to me. Woo! 8 million Weaver experience. And there's Weaver level 95. How about a little uh, Alchemist XP? Lovely. And some Culinarian. Cool. And let us not forget our gatherers. Hey, what do you know? Miner level 94. Hey, what do you know? Fisher level 91. So yeah, things are going pretty well. There is but a little ways more. So let's hop to it. All right, day three of doing all of my daily turn-ins until my crafters are fully leveled. Let's get 10 million XP for a white gold astrometer. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say 10 million? I meant 20. Bam! But I will take 10 for these gloves of crafting. And how about 18 for the keks of fending? Because these keks are fending AF. Bam! There's leather worker level 96. We got some craftsman drinks. There's alchemist level 98. And here's some boiled steak, which... Sounds like the worst thing ever. Woohoo, Culinary 92. And we might as well do our gathering turn-ins while we're here as well. Wow, what do you know? Another level. Oh, cool. Oh, wow, another level. Whoa. Okay, so where does that leave us? Well, 98, 98, 96, 98, 92. We are almost done. And we've barely done any work at all. That is my kind of grind. Uh, so, what's our next move here? Well, with Goldsmith sitting comfortably at level 98, even using my ragtag indicator gear, I've been able to pretty easily finish every craft, even the high level ones. And so we're gonna head back to Tulela and lol all over our Tulio. What? Sorry, what I meant to say was do leave quests. Look at that, 65 allowances, that seems like the right amount. So, we're gonna figure out which ones we haven't done for Goldsmith and go ahead and do them. It's gonna be a Black Star mask of casting. I could buy it for 120 grand, or I could make it for pennies on the dollar. Bros, my inventory is in shambles right now. All right, let's have at this. Let me show you why crafting is an easy game for babies. We're going to do manipulation, waste not, mineration, groundwork, groundwork. Ooh, we've got an excellent condition here. That's a, that's a blessing. I probably shouldn't waste it, but I'm going to. Intensive synthesis. Uh, and then we can dump an innovation and several preparatory touches. And three and four all right so here i'm going to put manipulation back on and we've got good quality again we'll dump a precise touch that puts us up to 10 inner quiet and so now our blessing is going to do 2000 because we're at max inner quiet stacks or i could bump it up to 3000 and then double that to 5000 and bam just that easy and then we just venerate oh cool intensive synthesis what do you know Woo. And there's level 99 goldsmithing. So yeah, crafting is easy AF. It's a dumb game for babies. Thou must not be dumb, and I should consider not being a baby. Wee. Now I'm actually well behind the curve here. 
far as crafting goes. Because really, if I had hard-lined leave quests and just spammed turn-ins with my hundred allowances that I had, I could have maxed all of them day one. I got discouraged by the leave quest achievements screwing me over with large leaves. But if we're being completely honest, I could have just powered everything to a hundred and not worried about it. Okay, we're gonna want think a bit of veneration here. Let's do a delicate and careful. Because as always, I make two of every item. That's the trick, right? If I have to spend a little bit of gill on materials, it doesn't matter because I'll recoup all of my costs by doubling up on my crafts. Check that out, 120 grand. It's been hard to keep track of profits since I accidentally bought a large house, but I have earned a few mil over the last few days just from doing these grand company turn-ins, doubling up on them and then selling the extra ones on the market. Because I mean, crafting an item only takes about a minute, so crafting two items only takes about two minutes. Uh, but anyway, our uh, other thing is a uh, rock has no rod. I could buy it for a hundred grand, or I could buy materials and craft it for virtually nothing. I would say perhaps my favorite part of the crafting hustle is that everybody knows about it. That's what's so great. Everyone knows that crafting is where the money is made, but the reason the money is made there is because nobody wants to do it. It's not hard, it's not even tedious, but just nobody wants to do it. Filching junk to lazy ERPers is the most stable job you could possibly imagine. If you want tons of cash, there's a very direct route to acquiring it. Just sell crap to lazy people. No, looks like my uh, six stack blessing is gonna be enough with the excellent quality here. BAM! Very easy. And then we double or nothing, because I like money. One of the most baffling questions that I constantly get while live streaming this game is what's a good way to make money? How do you make money? How do you get so much money? And it's, uh, it's baffling because it's so easy to do. Almost anything you do in the game period will give you money. Almost anything. Literally playing the game in any capacity, if you're doing anything more than standing around in Limsa, you're probably earning money. The challenge log pays you out something like, is it like 50, 60 grand in a week? It's, it's tens of thousands of gil. Look at this. This is just for playing the game. If you just do dungeons, just daily roulettes, right? All of these have a couple thousand gil attached to them. But then, if you do more of these challenges, there's 10,000 gil. There's 10,000 more. 10,000 more. There's 55,000 gil for doing 30 challenges in a week. And most of these are not hard at all. Look at this. Craft 30 items? You don't even have to manually craft them. You can use rapid synthesis. Craft 20 high quality items. Again, rapid synthesis can make these for you. Successfully desynthesize 5 items. You could buy junk out of a shop, right click desynthesis. Or a stack of fish. Speaking of fish, if you go fish, you will also get challenges for that. Everything in this this game pays you. And like I said about daily roulettes, look at this. 7,000 gil to play adventurer in need. 12,000 gil to play in need. 4,000. 7,000. Uh, 1,800 for guild test, but that only takes a minute. 7,000 for tank in need. 1,400 for normal raid. 7,000 for mentor in need. You get those bonuses daily. Doing anything in this game will pay you money. And crafting is probably one of the most egregious examples, because so many people neglect crafting, but it's actually incredibly easy to do. It's astounding how many products have a a crazy markup over the material costs. Like, I can buy 10 grand worth of materials, turn it into a furniture item, and then sell it for 500 grand. And that's a common markup. But that's also why so often my answer is, if you have to ask how to make money, you're probably never gonna make money. It's very easy to figure it out. Okay, let's go ahead and turn our quests in. There is our mask for 7 million XP. And there's our rod for 8 million XP. Honestly, I might just turn in another mask and call it a day here. Actually, let me just check and see which one is worth more money. This one's 100 grand. Hang on a second. Did I only make one mask? Huh, I, I guess I did. Okay, well, whatever. The rod's only 100 grand. Let's go ahead and turn that in. And even then, I get 10 grand back just from the quest. Wee! And there's Heart of Gold 10. Five points. And that is for reaching goldsmith level. 100. Very swaggy am I. So that's half of our crafters done. Let's uh, go ahead and move on to leather worker. Slap on a couple of leave quests. Easy 100%. Yay, trousers of striking. There's 99 leather worker. I don't think I can make it any more clear how easy this is. Oh, we've landed an excellent. We can either pull 7,000 or 6,000. Uh, hmm. Let's go with the 6,000 and then dump. And then we just, uh, great strides. Toss our blessing on. Easy. I keep telling you guys, the game is too easy. Y'all just don't believe me. The idiots don't realize how scammed they really are. Yay. There's some boots of striking. Let's go turn all this junk in. We'll just hit up our guy, Poname. Yo there. 
There you go. Have some boots. Idiot. Well, you know, 7 million XP. Oh, cool. 10 million XP. Guys, could you make this a little bit less easy? It's too easy. I'm scamming the idiots too much. There's another 8 million XP. And there's tougher than leather 10. Five points. I still had a fourth quest to turn in. Look at that. That would have been another 6 mil XP. Didn't even need it. Next on the list is Weaver. This one is four levels away, so it's going to take a little bit more of an effort. But that should be okay. Looks like we've got four unfinished leave quests here and two that I haven't unlocked yet. Let's go ahead and knock these out. Be on our merry way. All right, all that junk is done. Let's go turn it in. This one is going to be 8 mil. Nice and easy, there's 97, another 8 mil, and 4 mil. Okay, we still are a little bit short. I suppose I'll do a bit more processing. Oftentimes you'll find that you could buy the raw ingredients to a pre-craft at a very low price. And at this level I should get about 500,000 XP for each of these. So if I just make a stack of these materials, which I'm going to end up needing later anyway, it should slip me over the line to 98, which will then unlock the last two leave quests. Woohoo! Alright! There is 98 Weaver. Now, I bought enough materials to make a bunch of these because I do think I'm going to need them for further crafts, but let's just go ahead and price check them right quick. This is Ronique Surge that I'm making. So the material cost was 8,000 gil. As you can see, the normal quality sells for less than that. The high quality is going for at least 10 grand. Not exactly much of a markup, but if I then use it to make other items out of, I'll be able to mark it up far higher than that. So ultimately, I will still win. I'm going to go ahead and finish all the pre-crafts that I just uh, purchased, and then we'll take the remaining two leave quests which should get us over the line see you in a few minutes okay got those done let's go ahead and turn them in sitting pretty at level 98 there's a clean 10 million xp bam i oh, got some challenge log points as well and let's turn in these gloves that is another 7 million xp now there's a lot of pictos in the game how much can i sell these coats for eh, a decent little penny and they are flying off the shelves trouble is i need 10 million xp and i need it now let's go ahead and turn that on in i can always make more later or maybe i should make more now since i'm about a mill and a half away i think we're gonna want to pre-craft some thunder yard silk though actually i don't I don't know if my not sure if my macro is gonna succeed at this let's see it oh no it definitely won't yeah let's cancel that uh <laughs> okay yeah, let's get a master mend on that yeah we're gonna want a max buff here easy uh, a little bit of careful synthesis okay tragically it seems my macro will not save me on this one because my uh, crafting sets are not high enough yet I'd be able to do it with level 100 gear, but my 90 gear is a little outdated. Or I could make a different macro, but I'm freaking lazy. <laughs> However, what I do know with certainty is that if I make probably two or three more of these, I will absolutely finish my leveling. Let's go ahead and drop a Mastermind. Innovate. Great Strides. Blessing. Easy. How much XP? 700,000. And look at that, we're only a couple away. So I suppose I will make another one of those Picto shirts. And prep Laboratory touch. Woohoo. Yeah, let's go ahead and immaculate mend. Game's too easy, guys. The game's too easy. I don't even have to turn this in. I'm going to sell it for a profit. LaMeo. And there's smiling, styling, and textiling. Five points. Lovely. Okay, next on the list is Alchemist. We're at six out of eight now. Things are looking swell. And I've got six leave quests to turn in here. Let's see how we do. All right, seven mil, four mil. And there's level 99, there's another 8 mil, there's another 5, and let's give this idiot a book. What do you know, another 8 mil. And here's some, uh, whatever this is. Huh, 4 mil XP. And don't you know it, there's Tis True Without Lying 10. 5 points. That is Alchemist, level 100. Easy. So now all that remains is Culinarian, and as you can see, it's a little bit further behind than the others. It's actually my lowest one, because I've done none of it, because it sucks. Why does Culinarian suck? Well, because... Holy crap, bro, I got level 80 tools. Anyway, Culinarian sucks for this reason. Look at this. This is an average Culinarian recipe. Six ingredients. This is normal for Culinarian. It's a nightmare. All this is like fishing junk. A lot of this is just... It, it comes from all over, right? Getting all this junk to make all this stuff 
is an utter nightmare. But that's okay, because with all grinds, there are corners that you can cut. And this week, I have not done my custom deliveries yet. Let's go fry up some orphanage donations. To Idleshire we go. Wee. Baby run, baby run, baby run, baby run, baby run, baby run. Hello there, scrap salvager. I would like to salvage some scrap. I'll take 24 of your finest orphanage donation components. Why you would ever be selling such a thing, I have no idea. But I will gladly train die all over that groundwork. BAM! It's just too easy. Alright, should probably go ahead and buy some better tools while I've got uh, scripts I need to dump. Give me that. Yeah, that is, uh, you could say a bit of an upgrade. And let's make a charitable donation to the orphans so that I can learn to cook better. Wee! It's nearly 3 mil XP per turn in here. And look at that, there's Culinarian level 93. And our final donation? Nice. It should make a lovely addition to Zloe's inventory. You're the best fisherer ever, idiot. All right, let's see if anyone's got an XP bonus. Oh, Margaret does. Well, to the Charlie and Hamlet we go. Coincidentally, Zoe also had a bonus today, so we were getting an elevated rate there. That's kind of nice. Well, let's go ahead and deep fry some researcher relaxation kits. We're cooking the books in more ways than you can imagine. Uh, yay. Hmm, tastes like research. Delicious. All right, Margaret. I sauteed up some relaxation just for you. Yay. I do love me some experience. There is a 94 culinarian. That is level 94 and a half. Margaret says thanks. Lameo. And back to Tililal we go. Time to see what the damage is. We gotta start on some leave quests. We got six levels to go. I trust there's going to be an amount of grind here. Probably what I'll do is look for a recipe that doesn't suck and just make a ton of that. But we are gonna have to make a lot of recipes that do suck, I think. Oh, might as well get it over with. Okay, so I cooked up all of our leave quests. And by that, I mean I cooked like two of them and then bought the rest because surprisingly the finished products are actually really cheap. And I got a steal on all this spaghetti. Look at this. I got 21 plates of spaghetti for like 1.5 thousand gil each. High quality. It's cheaper than all the low quality ones. Let's turn all this junk in. Out of the ones that I bought, um, the average cost seemed to be anywhere from 8 to 10. So, you know, it's like 30 grand for a quest, but it saves me the hassle of putting all the ingredients together. And I am very lazy. How much is a spaghetti worth? 4 million every single time. Nice. That's a lot of spaghetti. Now, this chocolate's worth almost five mil. I've got a bunch of those. Those ones I actually crafted on my own. All right, let's turn in this uh, steak. Yeah, I'm noticing a trend here, actually. A lot of these culinary leave quests, uh, the payout's not that high. The XP payout, that is. But here's the funny thing. Watch this. I mean, uh, the spaghetti quest. Again, it was 1.5 grand for each spaghetti for a total of, uh, it'll, we'll just round up and call it five grand to pay for the quest without crafting anything. I bought them off the board pre-crafted. I get 11 grand back for turning it in. So I'm actually profiting Gil by having bought those off the market board. I didn't even make them myself. So it is allowance intensive. You know, this is very expensive allowance wise to do it this way, but I'm going to go ahead and turn all of them in because for one, I'm profiting Gil off of it, which is nice, but it's also going to be pretty, uh, decent XP. It's not great, but again, none of these leaves have been great. There's 97. We can do this three more times, and now two more times, and I got just one more. Right. So that delivers me all the way to 97 and a half. Uh, there were some that I overcrafted. I did a lot of this chocolate. Yeah, so I could turn that in four more times. That's going to be about five mil every time, so that's basically a full level there if I want to do that. There's also this maple syrup, which is three mil, but it requires three crafts for the turn-in, although the ingredients are very cheap. So that one could be an easy route, but uh, yeah, let's uh, let's round up to 98 so that we can get all of our quests unlocked. How about that? There's gonna be five mil XP, and there will be five more mil XP, and there's 98 culinary. Okay, just a couple of quests left, so these are the last four that I need to do. Because remember, for the unique leave quest achievements, I need to do each leave quest once. But yeah, I've been finding that, surprisingly, a lot of these culinary items are pretty cheap to just buy. Like, here's bottles of mesquite juice. I could get these for under 9,000 gil apiece. But then the question is, well, how do you make it? Oh, God. Yeah, let's just buy six. 50 grand, it's fine. I'll make the money back. I'll make the money elsewhere. Uh, aqua pazza. 25,000 apiece. Now you're just trolling. And it's tenacity food, so it doesn't even have use in, like, raid. Alright, we're gonna have to make it. Oh, God. Okay, this is, this is rough. That must be why it's so expensive. Okay, bro. It's gotta be like this. I should've leveled Fisher. Where are these devotion clams from? I, just, I 
I don't have them unlocked. Bro, these clams are such a menace. Let's buy three. I'll just, I'll, I'll make a bunch of this crap and relist it. It's fine. I guarantee some poor chump is fighting in the same trench that I'm fighting in right now. So I'll be the Chad that makes the high quality and puts it on the market board so that they can buy it at an upsold price. Tee. Look, it's not even that hard to make. Very easy. Oh, crap. Gamers, we are out of inventory space. Hold on. I forgot about my engineering manual. There we go. That solves that problem. All right, and one more for the road. This one, I have no high-quality pre-crafts, so it's going to be a little bit more challenging. And I do mean a little bit, because for the most part, my formula doesn't change. You always max your quality first. Sorry, uh, progress. I mean, you always max your progress first. Let's get another manipulation on there. Run a bit of standard touch. Innovation. Great strides. Good condition. Pirate God's blessing. Bam! It's just that easy. And we're gonna need tacos, al pastor. Well, I could buy a ton of them, but I don't think I want a ton of them. Uh, ah, crap. I think we're gonna have to actually cook these. Okay, uh, I don't have the space for all these ingredients. One thing I have found, though, is that even though all these recipes require way too many steps, like, look at this, six ingredients for some tacos, utterly absurd. The good thing is, a lot of these ingredients come from old expansions, and they're actually really cheap. So while annoying, that I have to get so much junk in my inventory just to make a couple of tacos. It is at the very least pretty mercifully priced. Most of these recipes are cheap to cook. Seems to be fish are the big bottleneck. Everyone's always begging me to start fishing. As many people as there are constantly telling me to start doing fishing achievements, I would have assumed there were a lot of fishermen out there. Apparently, there's not that many, because the moment I need fish for a recipe, suddenly nobody's got any fish. What's up with that? Are you guys just trying to scam me into doing fishing achievements? so that I can supply the market board with all the fish that nobody's selling? Sounds like some kind of a trap, though it does not surprise me because it's a scam or be scammed world out there. It's a scam eat scam world. It is a scam world after all. Wild banana blend. Huh. No, that looks nice. Oh, so the cyan bananas means I have to play as Lanky Kong. Lanky Kong gets the cyan bananas, so I'm, I'm gonna have to go get into the tag barrel. <laughs> well, I could buy them for 15 grand a piece. Pre-made. I don't know about that, guys. That's, that kind of seems like not such a good deal. I feel like that price might be a little high. Some might call it extortionate. Some might call it a scam. Oh my gosh, nobody's got like two Yachtel spring water. You only got them in quantities of a million. Well, what do you know? My inventory's totally full again. Yeah. Guys, I don't know if my inventory game is ever gonna recover. Okay, we're gonna have to go mining. Fortunately, I do have the third zone unlocked finally, so I can actually do that. Ah, oh, crap. I still can't fly here, though. That's all right, though. We'll work on that. Let's uh, go ahead and get a bunch of this Yachtel spring water, I guess. Wee. Yay. Wow. Cool. All right, banana time. Oh, this is real easy. That's actually one of the hidden benefits to the culinary and recipes having so many ingredients. A lot of them are pre-crafts from like Realm Reborn, you know? And so availability of high quality pre-crafts is very high. So you can get a lot of free HQ percentage without even trying. Okay, there you have it. This banana is blended AF. I don't know how I mixed a smoothie with a knife, but that does appear to be what I have done. We yeah, chop that meat. Hacking and whacking and smacking. And there is a lovely wild banana blend. Didn't really seem like I blended it at all, so. Kind of feels like a cup of milk that just has banana slices thrown into it, if the cooking process is to be believed. But let's go ahead and turn these in and see how far we get, huh? Here's our tacos al pastor. Man, they really don't pay out XP for these, do they? Here's our wild banana blend. Uh, six mil. Something, I guess. Yes, and we get nopala tender tuna. Everyone likes nopala tender tuna, probably. All right, ocean explosion. Let's turn in our aqua pizza. Now this one pays out. There we are, level 99 culinarian. We are almost there. There's our mesquite juice. Another six mil. Okay, now there are many ways I could get to 100, so I'm going to choose the laziest way. We haven't even looked at collectibles at all so far. Actually, I don't even think I've got collectibles unlocked yet. All right, how much of that chocolate did I save? Right, so I can pull about 10 mil XP off of chocolates. Let's go ahead and do that first. I think the higher level recipes are probably gonna be worth more. Okay, we're almost there. We've got a second taco al pastor. Paid good money for it. And the tacos doth give in return. There's 5 mil XP. Right. Now we can either turn in another mesquite juice or another... Aqua Pazza. So let's do the mesquite juice. The Aqua Pazza cost me an arm and a leg. Okay, here it is, gamers. The moment of truth. And there is all in good taste 10. Five points. But wait. There's mastering the hand six. 
20 points because my gamers that is in fact all crafters maxed and it's only week two so yeah pretty happy with that like i always say crafting is really easy and leveling crafting is super easy so this isn't some huge accomplishment it's more like just a, a box i needed to check early in the expansion but i'm glad to have it done i've still got a long way to go with this i need to work on getting my level 99 crafting set put together shouldn't be difficult to do it all but it is something that does need to get done but all in all i'm pretty happy with that we got a lot of orange jobs back on the board and just a few more that we still need to get also i just noticed that this one comes with a title so uh i suppose i should now go ahead and equip that it seems i'll be a veteran explorer no longer i'm now an arbiter of the arts so uh, yeah that's pretty cool i guess anyway since i'm gonna need to get gatherers leveled next even though i won't be doing them this week i just about ran out of time there is something i'm going to need to assist in my gathering shenanigans and that is of course the ability to fly so i finished the first two zones of the expansion and i never finished unlocking flight in either of them i think now would be a good time to do that so let's see here in urquipacha we have four Aether Currents left to obtain. I'm gonna go ahead and drive around and collect them. So yeah, I've been working my way very slowly through the MSQ. Obviously, I'm not gonna talk spoilers in an achievement video, but uh, it's been an interesting experience so far. Nobody really knew what to expect with this one, this new expansion, because we're kind of beginning a new story, but a lot of feedback has been mixed so far. It's very polarizing. It's been very interesting playing it for myself so I could see where people's opinions are getting polarized. Not nah, crap, I need to go up to Hill. But yeah, a question I keep getting asked constantly since I've been streaming the MSQ for the past week. I have a non-stop stream of people coming into chat and asking, what do you think about the MSQ so far? And my vague answer would be, I'm on the level 95 MSQ. I'm not quite at the halfway mark, but I'm very close, I think. And my answer on the MSQ, very vaguely, is that uh, so far it's just kind of mid. There's been so much hyperbole and I don't know why. It's, it's kind of one of those things where people are acting like you either have to love it or you have to hate it. I've just been been okay with it so far there's things i like about it and there's things i don't like about it i just think it's mid at the moment but if you'd like to see my thoughts on uh, the actual subject matter of the story how i feel about that and uh you know more in-depth analysis you should definitely come check out the live stream where I am playing all of the MSQ, and I'm thinking I'll probably take the VODs from stream, edit them down, and publish them on YouTube. I think it would be nice to have a full playthrough of it available for people to watch that weren't there to see it live. It's something that's going to be very, very time-consuming because, frankly, the story is quite long. There's a, a lot there. There's a several hours of footage, but I'd like to get it cut into maybe five or six parts, something like that, so that gamers can kind of watch it on their own time without having to be there for the live stream. 800 North. So yeah, that sounds like something you'd be interested in. Please let me know, because honestly, the more people interested in it, the more likely I am to actually get it done in a timely manner. It's no easy feat to edit down a 10-hour stream VOD, so if you guys want to see that, definitely let me know, because uh, more interest in it will help motivate me to actually make it happen. I'm probably going to do it anyway. It's just kind of a matter of how long it's going to take, how soon I'm going to get started on it. But, but yeah, so far I'd say the experience has been... Uh, enjoyable regardless of uh what i may think of the quality of the story anyways we didn't come here to talk about msq we came here to talk about achievements that's another thing that i'm very excited for is uh we're getting so many new achievements right now uh with an expansion launch usually you just get a bunch of uh kind of the monotonous achievements the ones that are like level all your jobs again finish the new leave quests explore the new zones all that type of stuff we haven't got anything particularly exciting yet um the one that was probably the most unexpected was the 500 orchestrian rolls yeah this guy right here because previously this achievement stopped at 200 so now all of a sudden it goes to 500 and uh 500 is a pretty steep number to hit as you can see i only have 200 granted i never made a point to actually intentionally collect any of them so as far as like interesting new achievements go that one has the most intrigue to it and that i think will be a, a fun grind to get started on because i'd always wanted to collect orchestrian rolls because as a completionist i just enjoy collecting things but now that there's an achievement tied to it that's going to expedite me actually getting started on it i'm gonna have to actually start paying attention to those keeping an eye out for which one I have and don't have. Speaking of things I have, I now have another Aether Current. Ooh, yeah. Should be just one more. 700 Southeast. Probably gonna be up on that ridge, I bet. Oh, no, they're telling me Southwest. I think it's gonna be up on the mountain. 150. Ah, man. I was just over there. Ah! Oh, crap. 
Are you kidding me? I only have 2,000 health. Culinarians suck. All right, let's try this again. Ooh, lookout point. Bro, if I do all this and find out it's down the mountain. Oh, it's gotta be up there, surely. Oh yeah, I think we've got it. Yeah, there it is. Aha, and there's Freebird, Urko Pacha. Five points. Check this out, now my car can spread its wings and fly off into the horizon. But we do still have Kozuma Uka to deal with, so let's head over there. I'm also missing four here, so we got the exact same amount of work to do. The bright side is this place has three Aetherites instead of two, so I can at least uh, find them a little bit quicker, I hope. It's gonna be on the tree, isn't it? It's on the tree. Oh, it's behind the tree. Well, that was surprisingly merciful. 1200 Southeast. This one looks like it might be on an island. Oh man, car can't swim. What good is it then? Baby swim, baby swim, baby swim, baby swim, like an anger-powered torpedo. Yep, there it is, you can see it from here. Yeah, give me that, give me all of that sky candy. Woohoo, the next one's southeast. Oh man. Oh, car can't swim on the surface. Well, watch this. Car can swim underwater. Why? Because screw you. Huh. We got ourselves another one. All right, where's the final one? 1300 North. Okay, so it's gonna be like right around there, probably. Now, the ideal way to do things, the correct way to operate, the efficient way, would be to unlock flight before doing any side content in a zone. That would be shared fates, side quests, all that nonsense. But yeah, as you can see, I've already done all the side quests here, and I've finished shared fate here, because efficiency is not the name of my game. I kind of just do whatever I think is fun. That's why I get annoyed when people are always trying to bombard me with infographics and, you know, spreadsheets and you know, junk like that, where it's like, here's the efficient way to grind all the achievements. Like, I, I don't want to do it the most efficient way. I'm going to do it my way. In whatever order I please, no matter how inefficient I may be. Because remember, I've still got five and a half years of leave quests to do, so whatever happens in the next five years doesn't really matter that much. Efficiency won't benefit me because I'm still going to be waiting for the leave quests in the long run, so I might as well just enjoy the ride. Probably shouldn't be wandering around these ocelots, they can turn around and kill me. Oh, there it is. Wee. So, you know, my flag was only a little bit off. Alright, let's get it. Give me that ether. Yeah! And there's Freebird! Kozama Uka. Five points. Now we got flight in two zones, pretty swaggy. And now my car can spread its wings and fly. Yay. So a lot has been accomplished here and now, but uh, I fear we're not going to get a very satisfying conclusion to this story, unfortunately, because most of the points that I gained were uh, here and now today, which means the rankings aren't going to update until midnight. So yeah, whatever rank I walk away with today is probably not going to be exactly where I am. We won't know until tomorrow, but that's okay because with the new expansion, so many people are getting all of the story achievements and the exploration achievements and things like that, that the, uh, the rankings are shifting around rapidly. It's going to take a couple weeks for things to settle back in before we can really uh, pay too close attention to them at this point. But nevertheless, let's see how we did. Let's go ahead and roll that outro. And there you have it. This week I pulled a big old 12 achievements for a total of 105 points. This brought my LOL achievement score up to 17,520. My server rank is currently sitting at 112, but we'll see how long that lasts. Anyway, I'm busy AF, so I'm going to get back to working my way through the MSQ and giving Wooklamot pep talks. One like equals one pep talk. Okay, bye.